Laser engraved city maps on wood look amazing. How are these custom graphics designed and made? Today, I'll show you a simple step-by-step -step process for creating a custom engraved map of any city. To start our process, go to a website called Snazzy Maps. At the top of the screen, click on Build a Map. In the window on the left side of the screen, type Epilogue and press Enter. This will bring up preset styles that others have created. Scroll down to Epilogue Laser Maps Thin Lines created by Benjamin Sieber and select it and click Apply Style. Now, select Size and Location in the window on the left of the screen. Under the options, change the height to 100 and switch from Pixels to Percent. This will give us the proper scale and proportions of the map. Using the Search for Location function, type in the place that you want to create a map of for this project. In my case, I'll use the city where I'm living now, which is Buffalo, New York. Using the zoom level feature, you can zoom out to show an overview of the city, or you can zoom in, which will show more details within the city, like streets and different blocks. For my city map of Buffalo, New York, I'll zoom in to show the streets of the city, and later, I'll stitch different maps together to create a detailed map that will show the entire city. When you're all set with your map, click Apply Changes. Now, go down to Advanced Settings, scroll down and click Hide All Controls, scroll down again and click Apply Changes. Click the arrow to collapse the window to the left. This will free up more of the screen and widens the visual area of the map. On your PC, open an app called Snipping Tool. Have the browser with the map open behind the Snipping Tool window. At the top of the Snipping Tool, click the scissor icon that says New. Click at one corner of the map and drag the cursor to the corner diagonally away from it. Make sure you don't get any of the text at the bottom left or bottom right of the map. When you have a good selection in the Snipping Tool window, click the floppy disk button that says Save and save the file as a PNG on your computer. Since we're capturing multiple areas of the map and stitching them together with this level of detail, left click on a map in the browser and drag to include more of the map. For my map of Buffalo, New York, I started at the south of the city, and now I'll move north. Make sure you include some of the previous map area in this updated view. Follow the same process with the snipping tool as before. For my map, I needed a total of three screen captures. For this next step, I use Photoshop to stitch the screen captures together. Starting with the top of the map, I change the opacity to 50% so that I could see through it. I click and drag the map until the roads and water line up with the middle section. I get the map in the proximity of where it needs to be, zoom into the overlapping area, and use the arrow keys on my keyboard to nudge the top layer until it's perfectly aligned. Once I'm satisfied with the overlap, I change the opacity back to 100%. In the Layers panel, I select the top and middle layers of the map, right-click, and merge the layers together. This creates one layer with both images combined. I select the lower portion of the map and follow the same steps with changing the opacity, moving the layer to the top of the others in the layer panel, and getting the maps to align. Once all of the layers are merged and I'm satisfied with the map, I select the layer, hold Ctrl, and press T on my keyboard to transform the image. I hold the Shift key on my keyboard and drag one corner until it fits within the canvas. My canvas size for this project is 8.5 inches by 11 inches tall. Lastly, you won't see this part in the video, but I decided to crop the map to reduce its height. For the frame and label, I'll be using Illustrator to set up the laser cut file. After importing my cropped map, I use the rectangle tool, click on the board, and draw 8.5 by 11 inch rectangle. I select the map and move it into place. My goal is to keep the same distance around the entire map so that there's a border around it. Using the text tool, I type Buffalo New York at the bottom of the map. I love Helvetica font, so I use a bold version of it and change the size to 72 points. Using the rectangle tool again, I click at one corner of the image, hold, and drag to the corner diagonally opposite. 
I change the color of the line to blue. This will engrave a border around the entire map. Now we're ready to set up the Glowforge to laser engrave and cut this project. For our materials and tools, I'll be using maple plywood and a Glowforge laser cutter. I like using maple plywood for engraving graphics because the engraved areas are dark and when it's against the light colored wood, the contrast looks great. I turn on my Glowforge, turn on my inline fan, and place the maple plywood onto the crumb tray. In Glowforge's online interface, I change each setting to my preferred ones. For engraving, I use a thousand speed, full power, and either 270 or 340 lines per inch. I leave the text engrave options as Glowforge's preset SD engrave, update the border around the map with more power and speed, and reduce the cutting speed to ensure it cuts all the way through the material. As the Glowforge engraves the map, I watch to make sure that the settings are creating the correct depths and darkness in the wood. The idea was that the waterways would be engraved far enough down so the wood grains create a beautiful texture. The roads and rivers will also be dark enough to create contrast against the light color of the maple wood. In this case, the engraving is coming out exactly as planned. If it seemed to be too light or too dark, I'd press the glowing button to pause the print and cancel it. Then, I'd readjust the settings and try again. If you're interested in purchasing a Glowforge for yourself, scroll down to the description section of this video where I'll share a link that'll get you up to $500 off of a Glowforge Pro. Once the laser engraving and cutting process is complete, I take a moment to look at the level of detail that was captured by the Glowforge. It's amazing how precise every road and river was captured by the laser cutter. I remove the map from the Glowforge and bring it over to my table where I'll spend a lot of time peeling away the protective paper masking tape. I use the back edge of a box cutting knife and carefully scrape away at the protective masking tape. A quicker way to do this is to apply tape that's extremely sticky to the masking tape on the wood and peel it away. I didn't have any available, so this was the next easiest option for me. You can see all the areas where some scorching from the laser would have burned away the surface of the wood. If you have a finishing sander, you can engrave and cut wood projects without this masking tape and simply sand the surface when it's done. Once all of the protective masking tape is removed, you can see the beautiful light maple wood surface against a dark engraved map. This project makes a perfect gift to family, friends, and neighbors. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to my channel. I'll see you again next week.